I think as hobbyists and miniature painters, it's really easy to fall into the rut of just doing the same thing over and over again. Once you find a technique or a painting style that works for you that achieves decent results, you know, it's pretty easy to just paint the same thing over and over again and not really venture into new stuff or things that potentially might waste your time or mess up your expensive miniatures. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Richard here from Crash Course Hobbies and today I'm going to talk to you about taking painting risks and why it's really important to level up as a miniature painter. So today in front of me, I've got the new Blood Angels Commander Dante model, and this is one that I've been really looking forward to, to paint up and include in my Blood Angels army because I don't have this model yet, and it's gonna be a really big improvement to sort of the HQ selection that I have for my Blood Angels right now. So I really wanna get him painted up quickly, but well, so that I can throw him in the game here pretty soon. Now, because we're talking about taking risks in this video and things that maybe you haven't tried, or you know, for me, I want to paint him up in a sort of augmented um, non-metallic metal while still utilizing TMM. So it's gonna kind of be a mishmash of both, um, kind of utilizing the shading of non-metallic metal and the highlights, but while still using uh, actual metallic paints. So um, definitely kind of worried about how it's gonna turn out. I've never tried uh, something this dramatic before. And then also, like I mentioned in the last video, you know, having certain goals in mind for each painting project can be helpful when you're trying to level up. And for this specific one, I'm really gonna be trying to push the contrast on this model as much as I can, or at least more than I'm comfortable with to try to achieve a little bit more dramatic result. So with that, let's dive into the project. So we start off putting Dante together with a little bit of snipping, a little bit of gluing, pretty straightforward stuff that we do with every model we put together. But I think this step is something that's largely overlooked or at least underappreciated as a really important part of the painting process. I almost look at assembly as like a bit of a meditation before starting a project. And if you're doing a, a important kind of like character piece like this and you're putting it together and you're going straight into the painting, it can be a really valuable step for you as you notice a lot of little details and things that you might not have otherwise remembered from putting it together a long time ago. So it can be a really good time to sort of help you formulate your painting plan in your head before you tackle it on the model. Next, because I'm gonna be base coating this in all gold, I wanna hit it with just some black primer all over. I'm not gonna bother doing a Zenithal or anything like that. So just some Vallejo primer straight through the airbrush here will be just fine. And then gonna go straight into hitting it with some Retributor armor all over the model and I use a good deal of uh, flow improver and thinner with a little bit of water in this because metallics you really want to thin them down quite a bit so they don't gum up the airbrush and also just gives you a really nice smooth coverage overall you do have to kind of give it uh, you know a couple of coats because you want to really want those mica flakes to have really good coverage all the way around to give you that nice shiny metallic look but overall turned out pretty good now that's one good looking gold boy I really like Retributor Armor. I think overall it's my favorite mid-tone gold to use, especially if I'm looking for like a more classic yellow gold. And there's so many directions you can take it later between what you wash it with or what you use to highlight it or to shade it. And here next, we're gonna just quickly hit it with a little bit of coal black from Pearl Krill and all of the joints of the armor. Just a couple of quick coats of that and just make short work of filling in all those gaps. I definitely recommend working from the inside out on a project like this, especially with like Space Marines or anything where you, you know, kind of base coat the entire model to one color. Just starting from the inside and working your way out is gonna eliminate having to go back and fix all those little mistakes when your brush inevitably hits more raised details. It's so much easier to fix that in the highlighting step or things you know as you're working your way out one of the things I really like about retributor armor is that it takes washes really well and you have such a wide array of colors you can wash it with to create different effects now for this model I'm gonna use Reichland flesh shade because I want to keep everything nice and warm and because I'm going for that sort of metallic but non-metallic metal look to the shading I'm gonna be using a lot of transparent browns and golden browns to highlight stuff with, so I still wanna keep it in that sort of warm space. But you could use Nuln Oil if you wanna make it look a little bit more weathered. You could use even like a purple or a green wash if you wanna make it look a little bit more tarnished. There really are a ton of options depending on the overall color temperature of the model and the look you're trying to achieve. Now this part was kind of stupid. I did try to go directly onto the gold with the royal purple. Now Pro Curl has fantastic coverage. It's super pigment dense, but it's a very hydrophobic paint. So it doesn't play well with other paint ranges or less matte paints. 
uh, on the first coat. So typically what I'll do here, and you'll see me do this later, is use just like a neutral gray to base coat anything that I'm gonna hit with lighter colors as it just makes it easier to work my way up to the final tone that I wanna achieve. But here I was just kind of being lazy and thought I'd hit it straight with the royal purple. I do get there eventually, but it did take you know three coats or so to really get where I wanted it to be. Now, speaking of that neutral gray here, I'm going through and hitting everything else that's going to be lighter color. So the wreath around his head is going to end up being green. All those purity seals, as well as all the different angel wing details all around. Now, those are all going to end up being very light colors. So I want to start from a nice neutral gray that's lighter. So it will take less coats to achieve that nice full opacity from the lighter colors and still pop really nicely with good color because it's really difficult to achieve that going straight off of the gold and it does save you a lot of time and overall will generally achieve a much more vibrant look. Next is just take a minute to block in the weapon with a little dark neutral gray pro curl. And then just going to move on to the wreath with a little camo green. I want to give it a nice sort of faded darker green that we can really work up to some nice punchy highlights with. From here, I'm going to hit all the purity seals with a little olive flesh, and this is just to go over that neutral gray. I do plan on wet blending these to just kind of achieve a little bit of shadows and highlights in that flowy cloth, but I'm going to go ahead and just base coat them all with this flesh tone first, and then go back and hit them with the wet blending. One thing I really like to do, especially when painting these kind of feathers for blood angels or really any sort of feathery type thing, is mix a colored wash in with a black wash. Now here I'm doing blue and black, a 50-50, just to create sort of a little bit of a tone into the wash for the feathers and this kind of works really nicely to balance out sort of a cooler color with the more warm color that we have with the armor and then we'll go back and highlight it with white afterwards and it just makes for really nice looking feathers. Because my blood angels are all typically purple or gold for the sanguinary guard I like to still add a little bit of red into the color scheme so I chose to color all of the little blood droplets red. I know they're typically just stay gold on the box art for these but I just like to paint them up as little red gems so I'll add all those effects a little bit later but I just find it still brings a little bit of that classic red color to the model and just makes it pop a little bit more because Dante is kind of a bland model in terms of just being all gold so it's nice to have a couple little pops of color here and there. Quick little blue black wash onto the wreath and this just works really nicely to kind of accentuate the coldness of the leaves on here again just to bring some balance to the warm armor. We're going to take a break from painting this sweet AF model to talk about today's sponsor and that actually isn't anybody. But if you want to support this channel, you can check out my discount codes down in the description. If you want to pick up some stuff from Monument Hobbies, you can use code CCH10 at checkout to get 10% off some paints or some brushes or a sweet go bag Evo. You can also use that same code over on Parabellum's website to pick up some sweet Conquest minis. So if you need some big giant 38 millimeter Minotaur boys in your life, you can do that there as well. I've also got links to all some of my favorite stuff you can pick up on Amazon from super dirt cheap brushes to airbrushes that I like. So check that stuff out if you want to support me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button too if you haven't already because that's a free way you can support this channel. But enough of this shilling and all this crap. Let's paint this, this homeboy. Let's paint him up. Let's finish it. From this point, Dante is looking pretty good. We just need to start to move into the sort of fancier stuff to really make him pop. Now, one trick I like to do is, you know, typically whenever you wash something, you want to go back through it and reestablish that mid-tone color. So I'm going through with the Retributor armor, but I always like to thin down my metallics with a little bit of Flow Improver. A Flow Improver will slow down the drying time of your metallics, which makes them kind of harder to work with when they dry out on a hard palette a lot quicker, um, as opposed to using a thinner, which will make it dry out quicker. So I definitely recommend using a Flow Improver when you're doing something like this. But I've got a nice thin down uh, Retributor armor and just starting to go through and kind of glaze in slash reestablish that mid-tone color before we go in and start really accentuating all those shadows and pumping up all those highlights to create that non-metallic metal effect. So next I went through and kind of did what I normally do with these armors and that's highlight it with some Liberator Gold and then go through and like really give it sort of a final highlight with some bright silver. But like I mentioned, this episode is kind of all about trying new stuff and the purpose of this video was to really pump up the contrast and go for a more non-metallic metal look to a TMM paint job. So I decided to go a little bit further and try something out of my comfort zone. So to do this, I'm utilizing some of the transparents from Pro Acryl, as well as a really cool product that they have, which is their metallic medium. Now, what I'm gonna do here first is use some brown and some black transparents 
And these basically work like inks, so you could use contrast paint would work really well for this as well, or just any Liquitex inks or something like that. And I started by just kind of very lightly glazing in some browns first to build up those shadows, and then as I glazed over it more and more, adding in a little bit more and more black to kind of make it go from kind of the darker brown into the gold into black into the darkest shadows. The one tip I recommend is whenever you know you have a project where you have a certain part of the mini that's going to have a lot of glazing happening is to save some of the other pieces of the model to work on in between while those coats dry. So here I'm just going through and doing a little bit of edge highlighting on that wreath and then we'll bounce around from parts of the weapon to the purity seals in between each coat of adding the shading. And we can't ignore this spectacular loincloth. So I got to glaze in a little bit of blue and black ink mixed together into all those folds, create some nice cool shadows that go well with that purple. For wet blending these purity seals, I'm going to use the same olive flesh tone mixed in with a little bit of the transparent brown ink. And that way, you know, we still keep that mother color in there. I like to do that whenever wet blending, if I'm trying to keep things nice and smooth, as it just looks a little bit more cohesive than wet blending between two completely different colors. And in here, I think it turns out pretty good because I don't want the purity seals to get overly dark, but I do still want to create a little bit of shadow, a little bit of differential between all the little folds in the cloth. I mean, a wet paint job would be complete without using Nuln Oil at least once. I'm going to go over the weapon and just give the Nuln Oil gods a little appeasement here. Next, in between glazing on the armor again, I'm just going to go through and start to highlight all of the feathers on this armor. The way I'm doing this is just using the same gray color that I used before I washed it, and I'm going to reestablish that color by just using it for the last 50% or so of each feather, working my way out so that the brightest part or more paint is deposited at the end of the brush stroke, just like you would with glazing, although I'm not going to be overly careful about glazing on this, particularly just because we're going to highlight it a lot more with white later. But what I think really set this paint job off was utilizing Pro Acryl's metallic medium to mix up my own highlight colors. And because I was trying to go with that non-metallic metal look by using TMM, being able to actually create my own color of metallic by using their lighter gold brown paint and mixing that into the metallic medium to essentially make like a really uh, metallic-y light brown created this really cool highlight color that again uh, made the non-metallic metal paint scheme look more believable but still actually be a TMM paint job. I did the grip in a similar style to all the other Blood Angels in this army. So they have a pink grip with a red wash over it just to kind of tie it into that purpley hue a little bit. And I think it looks pretty cool overall. And with that done, it's really just onto the little nitty gritty stuff from here, just applying all the different layers to make the gems look a little bit more believable, throwing in some edge highlights on the weapon, and of course, painting that axe in a somewhat lightning style, although I'll be totally honest, by this point, I was completely over painting this model, and so I just kind of phoned it in. I may go back and repaint the weapon because I'm not super thrilled with it but that really wasn't the focus of this paint job well there you have it guys dante and all his glory this was a really fun project for me and i highly encourage you guys to go into your next painting endeavor with a specific goal in mind and do your best to achieve that thing and whether you get it perfect on the first try or you fail and fail again this is how we learn and this is how we implement new techniques and so you know just trying to really motivate you guys to not get comfortable and not settle into a specific rut, but really explore your creativity and try new stuff. And whether it works out or not, it's really all part of the fun. And I found, you know, specifically in this case that I had to go back and reapply a lot of the transparent browns and a lot of the highlight colors and really punch up even more than I thought I was going to have to. But at the end result, ended up with one of my favorite models that I've ever painted. Of course, minus that weapon that I phoned in that I will go back and probably fix because it is starting to drive me crazy. But overall, you know, the real focus here for me was the armor and I am really proud of how this one turned out. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint up Commander Dante, and I encourage you on your next project to just kind of focus in on a certain aspect that you want to improve, whether it's better blending or better highlights or more contrast. Just try to zone in on one particular aspect and just improve and get better. If nothing else, I hope you have fun. Please remember to support your local hobby stores. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, guys, I hope you have a good one and look forward to seeing you in the next video.